Well, I think that we're going to bring the, um, the panelists back so that we can ask some more questions. And um, Manoa, and uh, I'll start with Manoa. Um, Tahiti, when is the best time, when is the best time and season to come? So um, I like to say that you can come to Tahiti uh, all year long. Um, we do have we do have a rainy season um, between between basically November and February. But even during the, the rainy season, you can have very sunny days. So yes, you just have to keep that in mind. But basically, you can come all, all year long. What's the water temperature? You did say it, but can you remind me? You know, is it does it change throughout the year, or is it the same all year round? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's um, so our winter is um, is in fact um, um, during um, starting in uh, in June. So in winter, it's a little cold, around 26 degrees Celsius. Yeah. <laughs> Still sounds good to me. <laughs> Thank you. And Katrina, can you um, tell us? How long a yacht can stay in the Cook Islands? Hey, Susie, um, you can come to the Cook Islands and stay for up to 31 days. So you get a permit on, on arrival. Um, if you'd like to extend, uh, we can, you can extend for up to three months, but you'll have to go through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Immigration. Um, but I would suggest you go through your agent to arrange this for you. Okay, and talking about your agents, who are the super yacht agents in the Cook Islands? Uh, we have five agents, but the main agent in the Cook Islands is Cruise Cook Islands. They specialize in with super yachts. Um, and they also have an, an agent in Tahiti. So, I mean, in Aitutaki, sorry. Um, so if you need anything in Rarotonga or Aitutaki, you can go through there. Okay, thank you. And what services are available at the, and I can't pronounce it, uh, at, your, at, your wharf. Uh, at the moment we have water is available at the wharf, we have power, um, diesel and fuel can be delivered, uh, we have fresh fruit and imported goods, um, so there's lots there, but I would advise if you are coming to the Cook Islands that you get all your provisions in Rarotonga, as the other islands um, have are very limited to options. David, what, um, what, what's, I have one more question for you. How much notice is required to enter Fiji under the COVID rules at the moment coming forward? You know, yeah, so uh, you need about three weeks um, to get the paperwork um, in and get your, your application processed. You'll need to do a COVID test within 72 hours of departure from your last port. So yeah, it's better, it's better to get the paperwork in about three weeks in advance. Okay, and who can help? Where can you get itinerary information? Yeah, so um, there's not really uh, much of a cruising guide for Fiji. Um, so for us as agents, uh, when I, I'm an ex-captain, I've spent 20 years sailing around Fiji. So we put together custom itineraries um, to suit our clients' needs. So if we get a list of needs uh, or, or interests, owners' interests, for example, of what they might like to see in Fiji, then we can put together a custom itinerary to suit that. Okay, thank you. And, and we have another question coming in from Anoa. Taxes required in French Polynesia. Please recommend a Tahiti agent. Or are there agents here? How does one find Tahiti agents. Yes. Yes, so uh, obviously there, there's a taxation um, on imported goods. Um, if you have to fly uh, food or alcohol um, directly to Tahiti. Uh, uh, regarding charters, um, as Fiji, we apply a 5% uh, charter tax uh, on the gross charter fee. We have uh, three main uh, super agents in Tahiti and of course, um, I can send you uh, all the contact details uh, by email um, if, um, yeah, if you require, yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, maybe one last question for David, provisioning. What's provisioning like 
in Beijing? What are the restrictions there? Are there any restrictions? In so there's a, it's improved over the years because we have, a, there are so many international hotels and now actually the local produce is improving all the time. Um, but having said that, if you want things that are obviously like caviar not available locally, um, we can fly most things in from New Zealand. Uh, as I say, it's we're so close to New Zealand, two hour, two and a half hour flight. It can be the same day or next day service um, if you get your order in the morning. Okay, thank you. I think um, now it's time to um, bring in. I think we've got to the end of our questions. Time to bring in Nigel to conclude this session. Nigel? Hi there. Um, oh, I'm quite gutted actually that I've never cruised the region. Um, uh, I'm thinking of uh, chucking in my career now, revalidating my Master 3000 and heading down there to get lost in the in the South Pacific. So I think it's fabulous and uh, and the, the, the pictures are just just gorgeous and I can't wait to get down there in some capacity. So um, I think coupled with the rest of Asia, um, I really think the entire region, it, it, it's hard to beat it uh, for the diversity of cultures, the amazing destinations, you know, all year round. It, it might feel like a far flung side of the world, but when a yacht comes here, it can cruise all around from South Pacific to New Zealand to Australia, up into Southeast Asia and South Asia and, and up here, right up to Japan in East Asia where we are, um, you know, um, it can cruise with short hop, hops for thousands and thousands of nautical miles, hundreds and hundreds of destinations around the region, year round cruising circuit, as I said, um, with all the same services and support that you can find in the West. So when a yacht comes here, it can stay here year round, great transport links, um, um, and as you've seen uh, today, uh, many, many destinations are like paradise and culturally absolutely amazing. Um, now, not all of our speakers tonight are APSA members, um, but this doesn't matter. Um, APSA is an all-inclusive um, uh, association. Uh, we promote the business of yachting throughout the region as a whole. So we work with other associations, we work with companies everywhere. Sure, our members will get preferential treatment by us, but we'll never neg negatively discriminate against any Pacific or Asia Pacific company or association. We want everybody to succeed down here in the business of yachting. This is our core objective. If good, healthy competition exists in the Asia Pacific region, then business will grow and people are gonna be successful and yacht owners will have an ever better standard of experience as they cruise this fabulous region. Wherever you are in the world, you can join APSA and get introduced to the yacht industry here. So please give us a shout, give Susie a shout, and uh, she can set you up with joining our association. And that's my little plug for the evening. Um, thanks to our great panelists tonight. Thanks to Katrina. Thanks to Manoa. Thanks to David. Uh, thanks to Susie and her team of Nick, Guy and Jade in the studio there. And we look forward to seeing you again next week where we're going to have a South Asia Indian Ocean Adventure, which will be introduced by the Vice Chairman uh, of APSA, which is Christoph Serd. So uh, that's it from me. Thank you again. Uh, see you next week. Susie, to you. Well, thank you to our panelists, because some of them it's late at night. <laughs> We've had, you know, there's different time zones that everyone's in. And thank you to our audience and also to all our APSA members that have supported APSA over the years. This is our 10th anniversary this year, and uh, so we're trying to celebrate in the best way we can. We can't have big parties at the moment, but hopefully they'll be, we'll be able to meet up in shows later in the year, maybe Monaco. So, um, yeah, in the meantime, the information's out there and online, and uh, these this webinar will be cut into small YouTube clips so you can watch it again at any other time. So thanks again for joining us.